yes. you had uh, oh, it's a brewery in town. What's your brewery? Here? It's called Ex Novo, uh, Ex Novo Brewery in Corrales, New Mexico. I did radio for 16 years and got tired of waking up at 3 30 in the morning. Is that your radio voice, or can you do your radio voice? Um, so that was the thing. I didn't, I didn't have a radio voice, and that was kind of why it worked because, you know, I, I think I could. Hold on. Um, I have an intro that actually, I, we were like backstage going, well, how do we do this? We just took a photo in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sh shower. shower. Well, we'll take okay. a shower. It's not for money. There's a shower, yeah. It's like, hey, great to meet you. Would you like to take a photo with me in the shower? But we were going yeah. wild. His like, wife and no. children were right there. Yeah. It was not creepy. <laughs> it just was weird. Okay? It's not a little weird. That's fine. It's so my first shower photo, which I guess Really? Is that's your first shower photo? Well, I mean, with someone else, but, <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Radio voice. It's the first shower photo that your wife took of you with another woman. With another shower. woman. That way. With another woman because it makes it way worse. Happy way worse. Ever. And my six-year-old was standing there with another phone. I didn't know what to do. It is. Uh, wait, what was it? Iron Man costume? A spider costume. Iron Spider. Iron Spider. Iron spider. You know Marvel? I mean, I feel like. Oh, it's okay. Please, I know you're eating into this whole like you know comic world. Please stop. You're really not making friends right now. Okay. <laughs> So here we go. Okay, written voice. Actress, writer, creator of all things amazing. That's a terrible radio voice. That's why I didn't go radio voice. Here's mine. Um, welcome to the events. And I'm um, <laughs> already here. I'm going to do events. Did you all create or is so creative? Uh, Star Wars oh. wrote and produced the guild. You may have heard of it. It was a magical time. No <laughs> pun intended. Actually, pun intended. Huh? Yes, there. So, uh, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, Felicia Day, everybody. Yeah. 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 Best selling memoir, you're never weird on the internet almost. Uh -huh. A lot of you have come and gotten at my table, so clearly there's still room to grow with that book. Yes. And um, I came here on book tour and it was awesome. I think it was, there was a place called Changing Hands, maybe? I don't know, it's a wonderful little place, but I do remember that the hotel that I stayed in, somebody stole a dress from that hotel. And I was on, I was like on a mission for months after that to like wipe this hotel off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> because they wouldn't acknowledge that someone stole the dress. They acted like I was like pretending, and I was like, no, I didn't even get to wear my dress. Oh, before. somebody stole your dress. Yes, my dress. Oh, my my dress. Ah, dress. And it's New Mexico, and oh. they're like, oh, people steal stuff all the time. <laughs> That's real. Well, we've got the direct. Is it really? That's real. Wow. Number yeah. one. Oh, um, it's a small city. Uh, I mean, we got a few hundred thousand people here. That's not very. That's just. Uh, what? That's so I, small. Yeah. You know, I know. I know. So tell me about this dress. I'm so okay. sorry. Well, that's, I remember that it was a blue dress. It was kind of out of my wheelhouse because it was a little too sophisticated. I was like, you can do this, Felicia. You can pull it off. And then I put it on. And then when I was about to go to my book signing, I was like, you're not pulling it off. Pull it off. You're good. You pull it off. <laughs> And then I left it on a hanger, like out, you know, not, not even in the. This is too much time on this dress. <laughs> so anyway, the dress was missing. Not, and I realized, and I called them, and they were like, "Oh, yeah, we'll look into it." A week goes by, and still the manager doesn't care. And they're like, "Well, I'm sorry, we, it wasn't stolen from your room." Like they just dug in, and I was like, "I'm not lying here, and I'm not even asking for anything except an apology." So screw that hotel. I forgot the name of. <laughs> Tell us the name of the hotel. It's so. downtown. It's like an old hotel. It's like a New Mexican. It's a beautiful hotel. It's like yeah. this guy has this great atrium. I'm not talking it up now. I'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Anyway, ask me some other questions. All right. All right. Well, I definitely want to start back to the beginning because. For those that, you know, nowadays, I'm, I'm looking over at my children who are on their phone and don't care at all about the fact that we're doing this, and it's amazing. They were impressed that I was on We Bear Bears. Yes, and Nailed It. And Nailed It. Which I actually saw, I forgot, it was like the cooking, baking the thing. The baking thing. It's show. a great show. Yeah. For a minute, and I was really relevant to five to seven-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I like, literally had friends calling me, like, can you come to my house? Because finally I know somebody important. I mean, <laughs> my child. in a couple of years, I was going to say, in a couple of years, you'll, you'll be relevant again because you'll have a five to seven year old and then she'll be impressed with me i doubt it no no, no but uh, maybe her friends 
Because like, she had a mom dressed like an elf once, so uh, that's cool. I mean, I'll be doing that when she's five to seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, if I do carpool, I'm going to be an elf ear carpool. I'd be yeah. like, oh, that mom again. Did you just call it elf ear carpool? Elf, you, elf ear carpool? Yeah, that's yeah, a that's service. Just, that should be a national movement. It should be. It elf ear carpool. Every parent, please put the elf ears on <laughs> We're starting trends. I mean, you, know, you really did. This is what I want to talk about. I've got little ones over here who are on YouTube, and that's kind of taken over the world. And there was a time when we actually we oh, on YouTube. Of course, it's uh, a horror show over there. Yes, it is a horror show. Um, but back in the day, people actually had to watch network television and go to the movie theater, and there were things like that. And then you did. A few little things. I mean, you created stuff on the internet. You yeah. created the guild, and and you. I uh, did a Dr. Horrible sing along box. <laughs> yes. No, I'm a DIY queen, and then I spent the last couple of years trying to get into Hollywood. I was like, what are you doing? Right, right, right. That's not fun. You were an episode of The Rookie, though. That's I was cool. I'm I'm not, I've been doing magicians, yeah. supernatural, which is always awesome. But, like, you can't say supernatural quickly. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but but the stuff that I love is always my own stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just I the power of somebody. You know, I love creating things. I love Absolutely. making things and like you know showing people what I make. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to come from the heart, and that's what I really believe. See, and I love I love that because I mean you have a new book coming out in October. Yes, as a segue, that's a good. You're, 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 you're a professional. Oh my gosh! Uh, look at that. Yeah, I have a new book coming out October first called Embrace Your Weird, Face Your Fears, and Unleash Creativity, and it's designed to help people, you know, do what I did um, right. when I'm back and I'm at the Guild, like, made the Guild, like, just, if you have a creative impulse, follow it, and the book is really cool because it's a combination exercises that you guys, as the reader, would fill out as you, as I tell you wise words, and also show you drawings of worded out unicorns and things like that, so, uh, I try to make it funny and so also kind of earnest sometimes, but I truly just, I, I feel like I have gotten more fulfillment in my life by making things on my own, whether they were popular or not. Yeah. And so I want to encourage that in other people, whatever age you are. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, so that's the goal with the book. Okay. I love that goal. I, I, because, I mean, let's go back. You were a homeschool. I was. You were, homeschool. You, you were a, a 30 mile player like me. So I was. Well, no, I was a homeschool. That was when I was in my 20s. I know. You know, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that was my first computer game. And it, Wow. Yes. wow, really? You yes. started late. I did start late. I wasn't an elf quester. I was like a. I actually elf quester? Was it? You were an elf quest? That's a comic. Um, oh, wait, 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 no, no, no. It was a computer game first. Was it really? I used to run the software, etc. So, oh, yeah. so <laughs> before I make my video, I can run it. It was an elf quest. I ran a video game. I love the comic. Yeah, it was, it was like years ago. Oh, and then it. See? it was one of the first. And then, you know, WoW kind of took that. I know, it's so good. Um, Anybody playing WoW Classic? Anybody going to get in back in there? Yeah. yeah, thank you. I'll I'm going to try to resist, but I'm probably going to scratch that itch. That's what I want to do, though, because I'm still that guy that, you know, when I see people playing, I'm like, children to raise that. back in my day, you couldn't get a mount until level 40, and it took you <laughs> three months. It's true, it's true. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. And, then, yeah, and that was before, like, you get a quest, and then be like, Oh, where the hell do I go? Like, I don't know where I'm going. Back. And it's like, and it's, you know, the guy. There's no map in the video game. You have to actually read things? Guys, come on. Did anybody play World of Warcraft back in the day? Like, anybody? Oh, yeah. Okay. We all had that experience. We, we, all, we all danced on an Iron Forge mailbox. Amen. man. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of spawned your, your uh, wanting to create a guild, right? Yeah, I did, because I was addicted to video games, and I got guilted into um, creating something, because my friends, you know, formed a support group, and they were like, you know, stop playing video games. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, I guess I'll just play, watch, you know, write something about video games, so I can have an excuse to still play video games. <laughs> I really mean, I really gained the system, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really did that. Well, the, I mean, and that's what you're trying to tell other people to do with your latest book. Yeah, really. I know. I, I, I honestly like. There's. It's supposed to be fun. Like, if you ever, you know. I mean, I don't want to say self help book, but like, I, I guess there are some self help things underneath. But it's really just about like. I think in this world where we're all consuming and we're all nerds, we like to consume other people's creativity, but we sell ourselves short if we aren't making our own creativity and putting it out in the world. And like, there's no excuse to not just take one night a week and just do something creative for yourself, whether it's like basket weaving or making a movie in your backyard, like. 
that will be so much more fulfilling to you as a person down the line than just always consuming other people's things. And so I guess like for me, like I I, I feel like it's a necessary like human thing to get your voice out there because nobody else has your voice, right? We're all just finite small beings in the bullet of the universe. <laughs> wow, <laughs> took a turn. So what I so Basket weave. <laughs> that was the first thing he said. I love basket weave. Basket weave. I, I took a class in it. I'm a weirdo. Anyway. No, I, well, I mean, see, now you're selling yourself. Weird is it? Embrace your You're weird, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the name of the new book, actually. Not the inner part, but just embrace He's really bringing it back. He's really, doing a yeah. radio thing where he's calling it back. Yeah. Love so that. It, it releases in October. If yeah, anybody's really interested. Love the spirit. Felicia Day book. Down to yeah, it's Alicia Day Book Talk. Yeah, you can pre order it. I have a special. Yeah. So, Thank you, Steve O. Hey. What's O? Cool. Did you have an O at the end of your name? No, that's literally just been my nickname since I was a kid. Like, what? S P E. Your middle name is Oscar? <laughs> no. No. Oscar? It's very boring. No. I or just born... No. No. <laughs> what? Oregano? Orion. Yes, Orion. it's Orion. That's a cool name. The stargazing mother that I had. No, I grew up like. Uh, so I read about you growing up like homeschooled, and this was your world, and I was in a, a similar place where I grew up like super Baptist, and like I went like, Dungeons and Dragons. What was? No, you couldn't do it. Oh, you couldn't. No, no, I yeah. You're become a Satan worshiper. Yeah, but absolutely. Which yeah. you know, it turns out it's yeah, it totally happens. It's totally yeah. So <laughs> earlier, we, that's why we had to shower because with the goat sacrificing took way too long. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sacrificing goat, you have know, so, yeah. But, you know, other than that, then she was drafting. It's great. Great. So, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Should we do some audience questions? Are you leading this now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, you did come out first and introduce me. So, did you not see how that already happened? That Steve? already Thank happened. you for coming to yes. see you go ahead. We get deep under the cracks of the Albuquerque local celebrity. Oh, okay. Deep, um, yeah. All right. No, um, we definitely want to open it up to the audience. So, uh, for audience questions. Do they have like a mic they can go to? I mean, or yes. I do know, they have I to just yell? Yeah. The, uh, the, the purple shirt. Um, oh, purple shirt. Purple sh you just search for the purple shirt, and she's. Because she doesn't have any mic in her. Oh, oh she does. Stand. So, um, um, yes. if if you guys would like to ask a question, uh, Felicia, please. Ask a question. Yeah, so if you guys want to stand up, stand up, and go ahead and line up next to uh, yes. Purple Shirt. <laughs> well, what's your name, Purple Shirt? Sandra. 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 She's working really hard. So, yeah, if you guys want to, hey, Brave Soul, how are you? Okay, good. What's up? I can hear it. I'm for Felicia. Not what? Oh, damn it. Well, that's okay. Next time, please include Steve with your question. <laughs> How did you get into doing all these cameos and supernatural and magicians and all of these wonderful, like, they're my favorites. And oh, you just happen yeah. to be in every one of them. I try. I'm like basically following you. Like, what is oh, in your yeah. Netflix queue? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I want to be on that show for her. Uh, you're asking me how do I get my roles? Yeah, do you So, like, um, like, thank you for asking. So, um, for the first, sh you know, I was thinking about this the other day, because I'm, like, at a crossroads in my career, and I'm like, what do I want to sp spend my time on? Because I have a baby now, and it's, like, hard to be, like, 15. I have a company, I was a producer, a writer, a, you know, actress, and it's like, well, what do you want to spend your time most on? And the answer is not auditions, because uh, I've booked very few roles with auditions. I'm very bad at auditioning. I get very nervous, and I have panic attacks, and I'm not good, and then I go out of there crying. It's a great career. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I did get Buffy um, from an audition, so I did start my career off on a good part with Buffy, but all the roles since then, like on Eureka, and Magicians, and Supernatural, and Rookie, and anything, is basically because I showed the world what I wanted to be seen as, and then they were like, oh, because I created the guild because I didn't see, you know, women who were, like, not perfect on TV. I didn't see women who liked nerdy things on TV or weren't a caricature. I didn't even see, you know, I was getting cast over and over, like, I talk about this in my memoir, about I was just this quirky secretary person with one line an episode, and it was so frustrating to me because I wasn't being seen as who I was. I was grow I grew up really non-standard, but, like, I feel like women need more representation than just like that perfect kind of girl who has all that fake hair and lashes in her uh, on her head. And uh, God bless those women, they look great. Um, I don't want to work that hard to have my butt be that small. So um, I want to 
want to show the world, like, this is, a, this is authentic. This is how good gamers really are. And because of that, out of me showing people my creativity and who I am through my creativity, I got the opportunities. Um, Eureka, they just called me up because they loved what I did online. Uh, same thing with Supernatural. They wrote the part for a Felicia Day type, and they just asked me, thank goodness, to play it. Uh, magicians, same thing. They uh, Sci-Fi had work, asked to work with me on like a campaign. And I said, well, I'd love to work on one of your shows if you want me to do the campaign. And they were like, which show? And I was like, Magicians, because I love that show. Um, so if, inevitably, all the work that I've gotten has been because I've proven myself over and over on the stuff that I do myself. And it's, I think that's a really just good lesson for anybody in the creative field or any field at all. You have to constantly be showing people who you are and reinventing yourself and re-examining yourself because we change as we get older, right? Um, and so that's kind of my lesson that I've taken, taken away from it. Even though it's awesome to work on all those shows and be part of the family, I wouldn't have done that had I not been doing my own thing in my garage. Like, date my you know, uh, do you want to date my avatar, which like, is, um, you know, my music video that has like 30 plus million views, and the outfit's in the Masonian, and it's amazing. I recorded that song, like, looking at the dude's sock toy, because we recorded it in his closet. That's how we got the acoustics, right? So, like, you know, we're in a wonderful world. We're in a, in a bad world in that everything is available all the time, but we're in a wonderful world where we have the opportunity as creators to get our work out there. And if we affect even one other person with our creativity, it's worth it because we affected them and then they can affect somebody else with their creativity. And so that's why, I, especially why I wrote this new book, because um, it's so important to us as, uh, as people to get our voice out there. So thank you. I'll be. What else? What other show should I be on now? <laughs> Anna, what's your favorite show at the moment? The what? What's your favorite show at the moment. What's my favorite show at the moment? Um, Don't ruin the voice for me. I love. Oh, the voice. Awesome. I would love to be on the voice. Awesome. 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 Basically, was building the guild by standing out in front of BlizzCon and in front of Comic Con San Diego, handing out bookmarks to people. And like people would take them and like look at them and throw them in the trash. Oh. Right in front of me. <laughs> but like I, you know, I like being in touch with the people who really love my work. Like, and I love that grassroots. I would rather us do something as outsiders than work with a Hollywood douchebag any day. For real. I really. You know, I've wasted a lot of time in my life, like, okay, now's the time you gotta really transfer over and really get in there. And like, they're never gonna approve of who I am. They're always gonna wanna shape me into something that I'm not. And like, that's just not my style. Like, I could be bigger and fancier if I had gotten a nose job or like, just played the game better. And I'm just like, gone to more parties, like, only did acting class nine hours a day. Like, I, that's just not who I am. And I think it's a long journey to accepting who you are and what you like to do. Like the other day, I was like, I don't have to go to meetings if I don't want to meet that person. I don't want to go to that audition if I wouldn't even want that role. Uh, and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Like, it's weird how we just, I mean, this just might be me. Like, I shouldn't be this old and just realize I have control over my body. I have control over my actions. And, you know, not to be a selfish jerk, but like, in the, in, in the confines of making sure that I can be my best self, I don't need to put myself in situations where my body feels dangerous. And so I think when you kind of like show yourself you have faith in yourself in that way, then you can be more comfortable inside. And so, yeah, especially, you know, talking at panels is great. I love it. Being myself on a I can talk here for, we can have an eight hour panel with me and Steve. Okay? <laughs> they, they can not blast this out of Because every single one of you will have a really interesting question. And like, you'll make me think about not only my career, but just the world in general. Um, every time I come to a convention, I'll meet somebody else's and I'll, I'll hear about their story about how they run an orangutan rescue, or like, you know, they're having trouble like dealing with bullying at school. And like, I would come away with a real story that affects me in, in a human way, versus like only working on the surface level trying to sell things to suits, 
who have to constantly second guess your creativity. And so, yeah, I want to work in Hollywood, but I always want the balance. And I think conventions ground me in a way and also make me feel like I don't need you. I can make things because I know people will like it, even if you say that people won't like it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, awesome. Thank so, you so thank much. You. No, thank you. Ooh, whoa. Wow. You look amazing. Thank you. So startled. <laughs> I, it, this took about 45 minutes and I glued some things like one of those anti wrinkle things. And, yeah, okay. It's incredible. Also, okay. it's cold as hell in here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm so cold. Okay, cool. Tomorrow I'm going to show up in like a, like a snowsuit. I don't think I'll find one of those in Albuquerque. I'm going to try one. <laughs> so I would say perfect and perfect because I feel like some of my costumes don't come off right. But, anyways, uh, have you ever gished? Can I have a gish? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have participated in a little bit of gish. Okay. Uh, I've been the object, I believe, four years or three years ago or something. I was a gish thing, and I, I had a lot of pictures of my face in cheese, made out of cheese. <laughs> uh, I think it's amazing. Misha Collins is such an inspirational person. He, you know, he doesn't have to work extra hard to do charitable works. He doesn't have to work extra hard to lift other people up as far as artistry or just quirky weirdness and introducing like crazy stuff into the world, and I really admire him as a person, and um, I'm glad to call him a friend. And, you know, don't try to make me do something crazy, but I want to see it. I want to see it. I've never been on a part of a gish team, because I feel like also it's a little biased. Like, I shouldn't be, like, heavy a team, you know what I'm saying? I'm there's not going to join your team. There's a chance for a actually, uh, oh, yeah? so that you get less points because you're famous. Oh, I get less points? Well, that's not your team gets for me to do it. <laughs> I don't mean any cap. I I know there's like some other people doing it, and they yeah. I know Ostrich did did a lot of gishing, so he got docked because he was Ostrich. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my other question, so okay. Okay. Bye. You look great. Okay, I I got a good thing. Gish. For the, for the uh, uh, world that was like, yeah, Gishin! Gishin! And everybody else was like scaring. It was like an uh, international like, scavenger hunt that Misha Collins puts on, mm -hmm. and like a lot. I think the money goes to charity. And... There you go. What? It's a what? It's the greatest scavenger hunt. It's the greatest international scavenger hunt. Yeah. And it happens once a year. It's happening right now, right? Because I've gotten a lot of. Um, I've got, oh, I just ended because I got a lot of pictures made out of smoke of me, which I'm like, first of all, how do you make a picture out of smoke? Second of all, is anybody getting like cancer doing this? <laughs> and it didn't seem like any of them were really true to life. So I was like, this must not, must be hard and probably illegal. Anyway, <laughs> welcome. Which is just Lisa Collins, hard to think. Hi. Uh, I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, I first found out about your, um, you through uh, This is Supernatural and the uh, first episode of Creators Charlie, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, and, and later, I found out about the guild, which I watched um, on a which I really liked. And I was like, yeah, my question is uh, where do you think members of the guild would be today? Where would the guild be today? Oh, members of the guild. Oh, members of the guild today. I don't, you know, um, I did a big comic compilation for the 10th anniversary. It's a nice, really huge hardback for Dark Horse. And like, I did like an extra couple pages on the Golden Guild, but that was when they were super old, because that was a joke. I mean, the thing about the Guild is a lot of people talk to me like, bring it back, and I'm like, there's nothing sadder than a reunion show to me. I don't want to see Will and Grace old. I don't want to see what kind of American Summer old. Like, it just feels like I will, because it was a moment in time that I, that I did that, and it was a certain kind of person, and I don't want to bring it, I would have to change it dramatically to, to reflect the person I am now. And I feel like maybe that would appeal to people who kind of have that nostalgia for that time when we had guilds. And gaming is so different, right? We don't have guilds anymore. We It's kind of sort of like, everyone plays like, you know, Fortnite or everything, they play with their friends, they have a small friends list, but that sort of community of like, let's find some strangers and just play together isn't really as common now. And so uh, I would love to revisit the show in maybe animation or more comics or something like that. But this, the idea that I would just be like, do I need to put a filter on this webcam? Like, is this depressing me? Is that me? Is that my vanity? <laughs> it's my vanity, right? I mean, I have good skin. I will say that. My dad's a plastic surgeon, and he always told me to wear a hat. So, 
Thank you. But man, it's Jeff Lewis looking old. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. He looks the same age. He's looked like Jeff Lewis since he was ni- like 19. He was that bald. <laughs> he was always Jeff Lewis. Anyway, he played more. All right. Well, thank you for asking. And you can watch the, the Guild on Netflix now. It's all on Netflix as movies. So um, I think don't watch season one with your children. But the rest of it. I think that's what my kids are watching backstage on YouTube I'm right now. Sorry. I can't. Not YouTube. It's not on YouTube, YouTube anymore, but please don't let your children watch YouTube and subscribe. <laughs> Poor child. Uh, hi. What's up? Hi. hi. Uh, first of all, I'm a huge fan. And thank you. Huge fan. Thank you. I want to ask, like, have you learned anything from the show? Like, do you now know how to hack into supercomputers or <laughs> to beat evil witches? Do I have any actual skills? From <laughs> from uh, from uh, world that you, live in? you know, no. Basket weaving. I wish I. You know, I did for I, I did a, a mini a, kind of a mini series called Dragon Age, and I wrote that script. And I did take dagger fighting classes a lot. Uh, I took a bunch, like three, four months of dagger fighting, and I did learn how to do stage combat uh, quite a bit because I've done so much stunts in my. Um, I mean, even back in Buffy. I would be put on a wire and swung, I'm like, whee! You know, you know what they're doing. They're like, okay, here's this pointy stick, we're gonna put you on a put you on a harness and just like, all right, just fly at that guy, go. I'm like, wait, what? Um, I remember there's one scene in a supernatural episode, I can't remember the name of the episode, I think it's right before I go to Oz, but I don't know. I'm basically in a dumpster, and like it's a closed dumpster, and I'm like crouching like this, and like I don't work out. <laughs> okay? I'm not known for my spilt bikini figure. That's why I had this career. Like, it's customized so I don't have to worry about that. So, like, I'm, I'm crouching in this dumpster and I have a rapier in my um, my hand. It's a pointy sword, guys. Thank you. Um, and then I was supposed to wait until the stunt guy yells action and the stunt guy opens the, gr- uh, the, the garbage, you know, bin and I'm supposed to, like, look at him and then immediately thrust upward with the point of my rapier and hit him under his chin. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, for, I'm going from complete black to, like, lights in my eye. I'm trying to hit a man the size of a dime. I truly almost put his eye out. <laughs> and I was like, I told you. This was not a good plan, y'all. Anyway, they had to, like, get the stunt double to do it, who, by the way, did it perfectly. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, that's what they. That's why they were created. I know exactly. So that's what they do. I'm no Jensen Apples. I can't just do everything myself. Okay. <laughs> what is that? that was their weird. That's what they were doing. They. I mean, they're incredibly they talented. The Stunt performers are like the best people in the world. And they're just perfect. perfect. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for that question. <laughs> thank you. For the record, I did that. Good. It but was. I feel like that would have gone viral if you had though. So I would, have, I would not work again. Not <laughs> yeah. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Um, what character do you play in Supernatural? What, what? What character do you play? I play Charlie. So I did, well, I think I've done 10 episodes over the, I just started in season seven with the girl with the Dr- Dungeons and Dragons tattoo. Hmm. And then I uh, was in seven through 10, and then I left, left the show a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And then I came back in 13 and 14, and. If I don't come back in 15 once, it will be sad, but I will accept it, but then I'll still be sad. <laughs> they better call me. Anyway. <laughs> Is that your question? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. You're on the wrong panel, right? <laughs> Wait, there, there are the... Okay, you don't have to leave. <laughs> have a good question, man. Hey. Hi. I had a quick question. I have an 11 year old daughter who's about to start junior high, and she was amazing. She was very independent, creative, all awesome. different activities, gymnastics, and taekwondo. She's very out of the box. But she's entering a pretty conservative junior high, and there's been some bullying issues. I didn't know if you had any words of wisdom to her, for her to keep that level of creativity and independence. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Can you homeschool her? <laughs> <laughs> She probably wouldn't mind, actually, but yeah, not in that position. Um, yeah, that's really tough. It's really tough to stand up against people telling you you aren't right the way you are. And like that's some, been something, like I think I got the privilege of being kind of 
incubated, especially through those tough years of 12 to 16. They're so, and when I see girls who come up to me that age, I'm like, stay yourself. Please don't let them change you because it's so special. And what women go through, I think a lot of the problems with gender things are when girls are steered away from the path that they should be, especially during those years. You know, there's a lot of not only societal pressures, there's media pressures, and there's bullying. Um, and for some reason, like, kids uh, instinctively want to take people who are different and, like, tell them they aren't right. And I think that's so horrible. That's why I kind of wrote my book. Um, if, if, if it doesn't resonate with younger girls, I definitely want to write another book for younger girls because um, we need more people to just plant themselves and be like, I'm awesome the way I am. So I guess the only thing I can tell you is just to really reinforce that. Always like, um, you know, take her places and expand her world outside of that school and be really, really bold about confronting these things. Like insist that the school take care of it. Our children should not go to school and be terrorized. Like that's the majority of their lives as during these formative years. And the fact that we have to put up with these other children who, um, you know, are probably just as damaged and, and sad but they're bullying other kids, like, that's not acceptable. And so you, as a, as a parent, thank you for advocating for her and just be there for her and make sure that she feels comfortable in telling you about things so there's not hidden things that she's kind of having to weather alone. That's what I dream with uh, about my daughter. You know, I look at her and she loves carrying potatoes around and she calls them people. And I'm like, thank God for you. <laughs> but I'm like, if she, and, and you know, it's a balance because like, I don't, being homeschooled and being out of that world, I had to enter the world as an adult, not having given.